السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ وقفا و سلام عباد نصطفا خصوصا علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا فلنفسه وقال الله تعالى في مقام الآخر ومن شكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى is al-qadir the one who is capable the one who controls everything he is al-aziz the almighty al-mutakabbir the great the greatest the most powerful he is al-qahar the dominant he is ghalib over everything he dominates, overwhelms everything. He is the Mubd, Mubd, Mubdi and Mu'id, the one who originates Badiu Samawati Wal Ard, the inventor of heavens and the earth. And then, when he, and then he will restore them back to their original position. He is Al Muta'al, the most exalted. Al A'la, the highest. And he is. Malikul Mulk. What do we learn from these names of Allah? That, whole, that, that all power, the capability of doing things is in the hands of Allah. You know, I, you know and sometimes we human beings feel completely disempowered. We feel helpless, hopeless, worthless, useless. Isn't that right? You've been in that state of depression and distress where you feel can't do anything, <laughs> can't even move. And of course this pandemic and this virus, those of you who had it, will know how it does actually make you completely there, no? Bed bound, unable to move and even think, you know, it befogs your brain as well, okay? This is, that is human weakness on one hand and on the other you have Malikul Mulk. Okay, the king of all the creation of the whole universe, the mutakabbir, the al-ala and al-muta'al, the ghalib, you know, the dominant. Wow, you know, you have Allah and then you have this weakling human being. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings as his khalifas, as his Khalifas. Now that's an interesting word because in the Bible, the, in, in Genesis, it talks about Allah creating huma, humanity in his own image. Allah created him in his own image, meaning that Allah gave them the potential, the qualities or some aspects of his quality, okay, that look, I want you to be my representative. So we are really, this is known as the, real, the royal prerogative. <laughs> Khalifa is really what? The royal prerogative. We have the royal prerogative. Allah has given us, you know, he's the king and he has made us, each one of us, their Khalifas. Sadly, worldly kings and generals and rulers have tried very hard to subdue and subjugate human beings, to enslave them, to make them their slaves. Isn't that true? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> whether it is today's, you know, presidents and prime ministers, or whether it was 100 years ago, it's the same mentality. How do we rule over them? Okay. Very few want to actually 
empower human beings. But if you want to actually empower human beings, and this is what I want to talk about today. The today's khutbah is about empowering. How Allah empowers human beings in an amazing way. The Quran is really a book that empowers you. Not the one that constrains, restrains and restricts you, but in fact, it gives you power. What's the proof? Well, I've just collected here just 10 verses. Look, just look at them. Anybody who just reads, these are actually the fawasil or the, the uh, end of the verses. Uh, for example, Man amila salihan falin nafsihi. Allah says, whoever does good work, it is for his own good. Wow. <laughs> you know, woman amila salihan falin nafsihi. And then, woman shakara fa'inna ma yashkuru li nafsi. And if you are thankful and grateful, you are grateful and thankful for yourself, meaning you are going to benefit from it. You are the first recipient of the consequences of your deeds. That is extremely empowering, enriching, and really enabler. And this is what the Quran is, and this is what makes it so unique. It is actually empowering, enabler, the Quran. Unlike some of the other books, you know, which give kings power, the Quran doesn't. Okay? The Quran doesn't praise them at all. Bible is full of it. And that is what actually led to the whole concept of monarchy in the West. And still to this day, because the monarch is the, the son or the daughter of the God. Okay? He has divine rights. Okay? Anyway, that's another uh, topic. But here we're talking about how the Quran is empowering us. You know, by using these amazing ideas and repeating them again and again and again. I've just called 10 of these very powerful verses, each one of them really saying to us, you know, your fate lies in your own hands. Your destiny is in your own hands, okay? Not in somebody else's hands, okay? It really is building confidence. It's really raising our hopes, aspirations as well, Jaya, no? Okay? And this is what really makes uh, Alama Iqbal so interesting because he talked about the falcons, the eagles, and the hawks, these amazing birds that fly very high, okay? That see from the lofty position, okay? Meaning that, you know, that is what you should be. You should be the Shaheen, okay? You should be those falcons, okay? Uh, you know, so the whole idea here is, of really motivating, encouraging, freeing. But I think empowering is, a, is, is the right word because it's got, it's got two, well, if you analyze it, M, power, okay? Power is the ability to do things, okay? It's the capability of executing your ideas, your thoughts, and, and, and believing that I have it, okay? And so, uh, so here, look, let's look at the third ayah that I've chosen. Woman tazakka fa inna ma yatazakka li nafsi. If you purify, you purify your own self for your own self. Now, this is a really interesting idea. This purification. Okay, we live in a filthy society. Let's be honest. In terms of its attitudes, and in terms of its sexuality and morality, it is actually a very filthy society. From BBC to all the other evil channels, you know, on Sky, it is actually, what does BBC do as well? Gossiping, spreading those gossips, but of course, doing it at the taxpayers, with the taxpayers' money, all right? And therefore, somehow it's legitimate, okay, to gossip and to malign and to spread rumors, okay? And falsehoods, somehow, okay? It seems as though, you know, uh, and, 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 and this is supposed to be the world-class news channel, okay? So you can see that if this is the case, what is happening, okay? There is impurity, rids all around actually. The Quran talks about this. This is rids. It is foulness. It is filth. It is evil, okay? And of course, this is having a de you know, devastating impact on everyone's lives, you know, because we say, well, uh, this is norm. 
It is not normal to gossip. It is not normal to slander. It is not normal to spread evil, okay? And yet, that has now become so purity, both in, obviously, sexuality, of course, I don't need to tell you, it is so rampantly uh, rampant, it is so widespread, and it is destroying individuals, families, and the whole society, and sadly, our world as well. That is why, you know, the Islamic idea of haya and modesty is so crucial for our sanity and for our survival even, okay? At this moment, you know, if you look at the world population, uh, particularly the West, it is going down rapidly, okay? And they think that in, in Japan, for example, in, in, a, in, in, a, uh, is it a, in a thousand years' time, there will only be few Japanese left if they carry on at this rate, okay? Even here, you know, the birth rate is going down, and as a consequence, who's going to replace? Okay. Anyway, this is all a result of not having that pure thoughts, not being pure. And, you know, if you are not pure, what are you? Impure. Eh? Bnavate, you know? And there is a lot of impurity, and that impurity has impact on our morals, attitudes, way of living, everything, okay? Uh, so it, it's an amazing concept of purity. Islam is about purity, you know. Next one is, وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِ Whoever strives and struggles, does so for his own good. So, you know, the, the title of this is my Friday Reflections as well, and the title is, for his own good. For his own? <coughs> yes. So this is what the Quran is saying everywhere. For your own good, for your own good, for your own good. This is for you, okay? You know, there's a hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking, and he says that if the whole world became very mindful, God conscious, aware, and very pure and good people, they would add nothing to my power and to my sovereignty and to my creation, okay? And if all of them became impure and evil and wretched, they would not take away anything either, okay? This is not about adding to Allah. This is not about giving to Allah. He's beyond our need, you know, he's beyond us because he's as-samad, the eternal, the cause of all causes, the completely independent, unique being. So, وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ When you strive and struggle, when you work, when you do good, don't think you're doing good for Allah. Don't think you're doing a favor to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La tamnun, the Quran says, don't you dare say you are doing favors to God or to the Prophet or to Islam. No. It is he who has done a favor on you. Okay? So, uh, you know, when you strive and struggle, when you take those positive steps for goodness, you're really enriching yourself. You are the first beneficiary of your good deeds. Okay? You know, whoever follows the guidance has done so for his own sake. Okay, so what that means is, this is interesting, you know, it's already saying that you can choose to be guided or you can choose to be misguided. That is your choice. Allah is a hadi. Allah gives hidayah freely, freely. Okay, but are we ready to accept it or not? That is the question. And here, the idea is that if you want guidance, you will get it, and you will be the first beneficiaries of that. You know, this is, if you break those pledges and promises that you have made with Allah, you are the one on whose head that will come to. So we're now looking at the opposite. You know, when you break those, what will happen to you? They will be on your head, like the next one. وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِثْمًا وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِثْمًا فَإِنَّمَا يَكْسِبُ عَلَى Nafsi. If you do evil, you do sin, let it, I, I, I've, I've translated this, whoever commits sin, it is on his head. It is on his head. Okay. In other words, you are the first one who will suffer. So when you plan to be, you know, this is why the Quran constantly, uh, in almost a dozen places, it condemns plotting against others and secretly having meetings to harm others, to plot against others, 
Okay? And this is why, you know, spying, even on world stage, you know, that has now become a dark and a very important means, but it is not right. There is no, there is seriously, <laughs> what right do you have to eavesdrop onto others? Okay? And it creates those suspicions and today's cold wars. Okay, we, we went through a nasty cold war in, after the Second World War for, uh, for a few decades. What was that a result of? That was a result of these suspicions, these plottings, you know, that people were doing. Now we're going to embark on a new, sadly, new era where ch Chinese and the Americans will go into that cold war for no, no Allah knows for how many decades that will go on for. But all this, you know, here, when you plan and plot against others and you think wrongly about others, what will happen? They will fire back. That's it. That is it. So, you know, this is something constantly reminded in the Quran. Don't. If there's three of, two of you, Allah is the third one listening to what you're saying. If there's four of you, Allah is the fifth one. You know, it keeps on reminding us. Don't plot against others. Don't think wrongly about others. Don't act wrongly against others. And then, for man absaraf ali nafsihi, you know, whoever sees, this is for man absara, whoever sees, what does he see? There's an implied word which is barahin and hujja. Whoever sees the amazing proofs, okay, he's the one who will benefit from it. He's, he will be enlightened. He will have that enlightenment from it, yeah, no? And it's made clear in the next verse, Okay? Allah says, you know, many, many visible proofs are all around you. Okay? About the power, the might of this amazing Lord and creator, sustainer of yours. Okay? The one who cares for you. They're all around you. Okay? And whoever sees these, what will happen to them? They will benefit from them. But if you don't, woman If you are blind to them, well, you will get blinder and blinder and you won't benefit from them. Yeah, no? So, you know, the idea of having these uh, 10 beautiful verses was to show you that, you know, the Quran is a book about empowering us. It's a book that empowers us, enables us, makes us stronger and better people. So I wanted to ask you these questions. What do you understand by this idea? Fali nafsihi, fali nafsihi, fali nafsihi. It is for his own good. It is for his own sake. What does that mean? For, for, for his, for your own good. What does that mean? For your own good. I want you to all understand that and ask yourself, you know, what is in it for me? What is this for your own good? Okay. Are you convinced of, you know, the power that Allah has given you? Or are you still thinking? I don't understand anything, I don't know anything, you know, that kind of mentality has to change, all right? We really have to dump that mentality. That is a defeatist mentality, victim mentality, I'll tell you, you know, almost a kafir mentality. Yes, what is kafir? The one who is ungrateful, not not the technical kafir, but a literal kafir, the one who is ungrateful, unthankful. You've got so many gifts of Allah and you are saying, Miracle kya hai no? Hey? Isn't that kufr? Yes, that is the biggest kufr hai no? You know, to deny those gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, this is what really pulls us down. And one of the best ways to pray, and Imam Ghazali, in fact, you know, says that the highest level of spiritual development is when you have become thankful, when you are grateful, okay? When you begin to appreciate the small things that are given to you, the big things that are given to you, and you say, wow, what an amazing gift I have. Look at me, eh? And that confidence comes into you, he says, that is the highest level of your spiritual development and inshallah, you know, that is what we should be all aiming for. So, what do you understand by it's on his head? You know, this idea that when you do isthma, when you do a sin, when you do something wrong, you are the one who will be the first one to suffer, okay? When you do good, you are the first beneficiary, not somebody else. So when you give your money to somebody, 
Who's the first beneficiary? You are. You know, your cortisol levels go down, your blood pressure goes down, your dopamine and serotonin in the brain flushes you, eh? And you get that sense of, wow, that was wonderful, eh? And, and it continues, you know, and it grows, you know, that sense. And then, how would you describe the Quran's approach to empowering us? I, I want you to all go and think about this. We're going to finish with this question that, how is the Quran empowering you? to be able to, you know, fulfill your great potential that is within you. And I began with this idea that, you know, when Allah makes you his Khalifa, that is actually saying you have the royal potential. <laughs> you have the? <laughs> you are a royal. That's what it means, seriously. Because Allah is the Malikul Mulk, and he's saying you are my representative, okay? I have made you my successor, my representative, my naib, okay, deputy. And Allah is the king, therefore you are also royal, okay? So he's talking about royal potential in us, all of us. We are all royal in that sense, alhamdulillah, okay? So may Allah help us to appreciate, you know, this amazing, these amazing teachings of the Quran.